Good morning. We welcome you in Jesus' name as we come to worship our Lord and Savior. If you're joining us online, we're glad that you're here with us as well. For those that are here with us, if you take a moment to fill out that uh, connection card, hopefully you did when you came in, or else you can do it when you leave today, or if you brought it in with you, you can fill it out now. That helps us with attendance, but it's also a great way for like prayer requests or other things that are maybe going on in your lives, some changes, other things that you want to let us know about. So please take, take opportunity to fill out that connection card. Also in the back is where we uh, drop off our offering. Uh, that will be brought forward during the service, but um, we'll have a plate back there at, after the service if you forgot to put it in there as well. With those being our announcements, I invite you to stand as we begin our worship this morning. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for another day that you've granted to us. And a day to worship you, a day to rest in the knowledge that you are our Lord and Savior. Open our hearts and minds this morning as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. You may be seated as we join in singing, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. stand for our confession. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Let us confess our greatest need to God, our merciful Father. Merciful God, we confess that we are in the darkness of the fallen world by our own sin. Our failure to keep your holy commandments in our thoughts, words, and deeds as well as the good we have failed to do. Deliver us from the darkness of death by the light of your Son's saving death on the cross and the power of his resurrection. Speak now your divine word of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Amen. Our Lord is merciful and gracious, coming to us in our broken, sinful lives and forgiving all our sins. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We join in singing together the Gloria.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son, that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our scripture readings. morning. Our Old Testament reading comes from Jeremiah the prophet, the 31st verse, the 31st chapter, verses 7 through 9. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them forth from the, from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant women and she who is in labor, together a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water and a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading comes from Hebrews, the seventh chapter, verses 23 through 28. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading for today is from Mark chapter 10. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing our next hymn.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts gathered here today be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today in Mark chapter 10, we continue actually finishing out this chapter. We've had it for the last couple weeks. We see Jesus traveling. He's traveling on the road quite a bit. In fact, the text today didn't even talk about what he did in Jericho. It just said he went to Jericho, and then when he left Jericho is when he encounters this blind man. And before this, we saw the disciples who were talking to Jesus, James and John, wanting to know who would be on the right and left. That was along their journey as they were actually going to Jericho. And so Mark records for us that Jesus is on this road, and as he goes, he's healing people, he's feeding people, he's proclaiming the kingdom of God, but he has a direction in which he's going. But let us think a little bit about being on maybe that road of life. You know, as we go about our daily lives, there are things that we encounter and oftentimes we talk about our life being a journey, kind of a journey on the road of life. We encounter all kinds of things from being young when we are learning and, and growing up in, in school and other things as we learn what life is all about and we try to figure out certain things and how we can get good on this journey in life. And oftentimes it's the time when we think, you know, what direction are we going to go on this road of life? As we get a little bit older, we kind of maybe narrow down that decision for us, but we encounter difficult things, things that, that maybe cause us some trouble on this road of life. We think of detours or construction or just, you know, broken down roads, things that we might face in our everyday lives. We use those analogies for that. In fact, actually, sometimes we think about being on the road of life, especially in this day and age, as something that gets a lot more hectic and a lot more chaotic and a lot more kind of all over the place. And so what do we do with being on this road of life? Well, we try a lot of different things to make sure that we are on the right path. We try a lot of things to make sure that we are doing what we need to do. Sometimes it's we hurry along on the path to make sure that we get to that destination. Other times it might be just enjoying that journey as we go. But we encounter lots and lots of difficult things. And that's, that's what Jesus encounters as Mark records that as he travels on this road. He encounters people who are against him. He encounters people who want to be with him all the time. He encounters people who don't understand what he's doing. But Jesus encounters all of these things on that road of life. But I think what's important for us today is to recognize whose road this is. You see, for blind Bartimaeus, he recognized who Jesus was. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me are specific words that would have come from the Old Testament thinking about God having mercy on his people. And the son of David recognizing that Jesus is truly the Messiah. And so this road in which blind Bartimaeus is there, he's recognizing that it wasn't his road. I mean, he wouldn't have chosen blindness to be a part of his life. But it's someone else's road. It's Jesus' road. And this is the road in which he is going to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, that holy city that David established and the kingdom of Israel established, where the temple would be, where they would worship God over and over again. This city, Jerusalem, is the place in which Jesus is headed. And this is his road that we are on. Sometimes we get confused and we think about the road ourselves. We think about the path that we are going to choose ourselves. We think about the circumstances that happen to us in life. But we forget that this is not our road, but Jesus' road. This is the road in which he is heading to Jerusalem to do one important task. 
And that is to die for us. To go to the cross and die for us. You see, on this road, we are actually utterly lost without Jesus. We would be lost forever without him because, well, it's not our road, but it is Jesus' road. The road that leads to the cross in which he will die for us. But not only that, it is also the road that leads to eternal life because of what Jesus has done. And so the invitation is not that we can figure out the road ourselves, that we can blaze the own path ourselves, but the invitation over and over again by Jesus, over and over again in all of our Gospels, is Jesus says, follow me. Follow me. Follow me to the ends of the earth. Follow me to the end of this road. Follow me to eternal life. That's what happened for blind Bartimaeus. He recognized who truly was in charge. You know, the crowds had said to him, be quiet. You know, you're stirring things up. But he kept crying even louder, our text says, because he knew who he was appealing to, the one who was master of the road of life, the one who would do what blind Bartimaeus wanted but ultimately what God wants. And he gives him sight. Not only sight in the sense that now he could see because he wasn't blind anymore, but in our text, in a very subtle but very powerful way, it says that then he followed Jesus. So his sight was more than just being that physical sight. It was the sight of a heart changed. He recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. And in that healing, recognized this is the one and he would follow him, follow him to Jerusalem, follow him to eternal life. Actually, in Mark's gospel, if you just turn to the next chapter, right after chapter 10, it's the triumphant entry into Jerusalem and the final week of Jesus' life. So Mark carefully put this story here to remind us that we are on the road that Jesus has given to us. This road in which we are to follow him. And so that's my encouragement today. That's Mark's encouragement to us today to see whose road this is in this life that we are encountering and to know who we can trust. Not in our own strength, not in the strength of the world, but in the strength of the one who has blazed the path for us. Jesus, who went to the cross for us to take away our sins. Jesus, who rose again to give us life eternal. Jesus, who then leads us to eternal life. And so we are invited to follow Jesus, to follow him in our lives, to follow him where he leads, and to know and trust that he is the one who is master of our lives. So let us follow him on the road of life. Amen. We continue now by bringing forward our offerings.
I invite you to stand as we continue with the prayers of the church and we follow the responsive prayers on the screen or in our worship folder. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks that you have restored our spiritual sights in the salvation you have given to the whole world through the blessed and glorious death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Help us to fix our eyes continually upon him as he comes to us in your holy word and sacraments. Enable us to follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, or to, to e the eternal vision of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, yes. guide and defend your whole church. Bless our synodical and district presidents and all who lead the church. Grant wisdom and grace to all pastors, teachers, missionaries, and church workers. And send the light of your truth into all the earth, that many may come to receive your grace and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Today, we thank you especially for the Lutheran Braille workers and all who serve those with vision impairments and help them access your word. Bless the many volunteers in their service to blind and low vision people worldwide. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Preserve our nation in justice and honor that we lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear the office of government in our land. Help them to serve all people according to your holy will. Guard and protect also all who serve in the armed forces of our country. Grant them faithfulness and success in their service, and grant that their homecomings be joyful. Lord, in your mercy, yes. by your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. Lord, we continue to pray for Doris and Zach, for Elena and for Wayne, for Janet, for Bill, for Marty, for Estella and for Dennis, for Oliver and for Melissa, for Ron and for Chuck, for Carrie and for Joyce, for Cindy, for Art, for Sharon, for Jessica and for Gail and for Profe Maria. Lord, you know their situations and we pray that you would continue to grant them comfort and peace and healing according to your will. Be with those also who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on all to whom death draws near. Sustain and bless all who care for those that suffer. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thanksgiving those who have lived and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, yes. into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. A couple announcements in regards to our life together. Again, thank you for worshiping with us, and we continue in that ministry of hearing God's word and giving him honor and praise in our very lives and being renewed, actually, in worship to continue on that road of life following after Jesus. We also want to stay connected with each other. If there are needs and concerns that you have, please take opportunity to contact us. We can put you on a prayer list. We can pray for you if other concerns that come up. Don't hesitate to uh, reach out to us. Also, we thank you, too, for your gifts that you give. Those gifts, which first were given by God to each and every one of us, are used then in his kingdom here to further the ministry that is here at St. John, and we thank you for that. 
Today is um, the Chevetta's uh, chicken dinner, and um, it will start at 11 for pickup, so hopefully you've uh, purchased the tickets, but I believe there will also be some uh, leftovers toward the end with that, but 11 o'clock, so we still have a little bit of time before that uh, begins, and um, thank you for supporting uh, the ministry here, especially through the eighth graders and for possible class trip in the spring. That's what this is going for. Also, Trunk or Treat is coming up on October 29th, which is this Friday. We need a, definitely a few more cars, about eight more cars to kind of round out. We want, usually want about 20 because we kind of make a circle in the parking lot. and It makes a great opportunity for our children to uh, go through and uh, to collect that candy. It's a great outreach to our community. So, so definitely invite people, but if you want to be a part of that, uh, please contact Lori Weir about that. Um, so we have a few more cars to kind of fill that out. And you can decorate your car to the hilt. Definitely bring lots of candy. Last year we had about 200 uh, children that went through. So uh, definitely bring a big um, amount of candy for that. But we're excited about that coming up this Friday. Also then in a couple more weeks we have um, our outdoor vendor fair. So pray for good weather, sunny weather. Uh, but that will be November 6th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And so we're looking forward to that. That helps support our uh, PTL here at St. John Lutheran uh, Church and School. Also, coming up is um, next weekend will be Reformation Weekend. And so we'll be celebrating our, uh, that Reformation Weekend. The weekend after is All Saints Sunday. Technically, that's supposed to be the day after Reformation, but we celebrated the Sunday after. But part of that service is that we recognize those who have been called to the church triumphant over the last year. And so if you know of somebody that you would like to be on that list who uh, passed away this last year, we, pr we ask that you would um, contact the church office. We would just need the name and the date in which they uh, passed, and we'll include that in our worship folder in uh, two weeks. But if you could do that uh, fairly soon, that would be greatly appreciated. But that's a special part of our All Saints service as we rejoice with those who are in eternal life. Any other announcements that we have in regards to our life together? So after... Um, our worship time here, there will be an adult Bible study class. I believe there is also a youth class, or at least meeting for a little bit. Is that correct, Bruce, that their youth are meeting for just a few minutes? Yes or no? Bruce? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, just, I couldn't see whether <laughs> you're signaling me or not. Okay, good, excellent. Um, Okay, if not, then we are going to rejoice and sing our final song together and invite you to stand, uh, just as I am without one plea. Mm -hmm. 